Leiten her. Things. We put stuff down here like this. There we go. Get it all situated. So, um, I'm going to do some avocado tech <coughs> from scratch. You guys can follow along and hang out. Hey, Big Jar, how's it going? <coughs> And uh, watch what I do. I'm going to make two different um, mixtures. Let's see, I got my, my spoon, my knife, and my two avocados. Now these avocados came uh, from an organic source. They are from Mar uh, Misfits Markets. If you're not familiar with them, they do like uh, organic produce that doesn't um, make it to supermarket shelves. Like, it's not pretty enough. So, you know, they ship it out uh, at a lower price. So we get some of these every week, um, and these two were just left over, and they didn't get eaten before the new ones came. So they are, you know, they're very soft. And so they're, they're not going to be eaten. They're probably a little rotten inside. And that's, that's what you're looking for, really. Um, so, really simple. Uh, boom, you got your Cuisinart. Right? Pretty, pretty easy. Uh, if, I, if I had something other than my cell phone, this would be a much better video. But as a... Uh, little home grower we do uh we do what we can so we got cuisinart we got our avocado right you want to make sure just to get that sticker off i see a lot of people doing the avocado tech and they don't take the damn stickers off like why are you going to leave a piece of plastic and glue and stuff with dye and to like break down in your in your soil it doesn't make any sense Right, so, boom, we go right in half as much as we can. Helps to have a real sharp knife, because as we know, dull knives are gonna hurt you much worse. Um, I have a set of uh, global, global chef's knives, so these things are like wicked hard to dull. And, just like that. Like, I don't know, that could, that could probably be made into some guacamole or something like that. What's up, Riot Powder? Um, but, you know, you can see right at the bottom, it's brown. We got a little mold starting in there, which is fantastic. We love mold, right, in the living soil. Um, I mean, stuff's getting broken down already, and so the process is already starting, right? So you cut that in half with your knife, and then you just kind of tap your... Bing, bing. Just like that. Now, fortunately, this is like really, really soft. So I can just spoon this out. Um, whereas though, usually if they're not, if you have to cut it, what I like to do is, you know, cut it in squares and then kind of give it like a little just a little jostle inside and those squares break away from the skin and then you can just boop, boop, boop. But, all right, so let's see. Right, we're gonna get all, all the meat out that we can. And we got the skin here. And we're just gonna put that over to the side for right now. We've got the other half. Right? Boom. And there's your there's your pod. Now 
I'm using avocados, but you can you can use anything that has like a hard shell or not even a hard shell, just something a little bit more firm, uh, cantaloupe, pumpkin, stuff like that, um, that has that meaty flesh inside that the worms are gonna love to eat and break down. Um, as well as your, your soil mites, your, your springtails, all of that biology in your soil is gonna come to this little pod and just multiply and multiply, uh, get fed, break this stuff down so that it's right above the root source. When it's watering in, it gets, you know, those worm castings and that, and that uh, I don't know, is it frass or frass the dead, dead parts? But regardless, those castings are, are getting watered down over your roots and your roots don't have to like, necessarily go searching extraordinarily far to find the nutrients so it's it's like a like a little spike I saw a comment but I didn't uh... well there's a whole bunch of comments avocado tech oh goodness smiley gourmet yes chef cheddar Bob cheddar Bob RD worm guacamole 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 all right so uh i guess i'm gonna do the uh flower pod first so what i'm gonna do is i'm, I'm gonna i'm looking up or I'm, what i'm gonna add in here are things that are high in potassium um higher in magnesium uh higher in phosphorus maybe a little bit of, uh, I don't really feel like I need nitrogen, but I, something tells me that I should put just a little bit of something in there. So, uh, let's see, we find our, nope, wrong ones there. Find our measuring spoon we got, right? Uh, tablespoon, teaspoon. So, first things first, I got some oyster shell flour, right? Calcium. So I'm going to do a tablespoon of that. Just one tablespoon. You know, and this isn't meant to, like, be a straight-up feeding source for your plants, right? This is just, this is just a bump, just a little, just a little help in case they're, they're, they need a little bit faster um, availability of, of these certain uh, nutrients. So, we got the insect rats. We're gonna do two tablespoons of that. Uh, and then we got some Dr. C's BioFoss, so this is like uh, soybean, um, something or rather, um, but it's very, it has a lot of potassium, phosphorus, everything you need for that later mid-stage uh, flower process. So. so we're gonna do two tablespoons of that. Maybe a little extra fell in there. Whoops. But I seem to have a little hole, an extra hole in this bag, which leads me to believe my mouse trap did not work. So, uh, we got a little Grokashi, right? For biological life, for that mycelium, that, uh, IMO kind of stuff to kind of kick off.
This is going to help everything break down as well. So we got one. I'm going to do two. Yeah. What else do I have in my little... Oh, all right. And then, uh, you know, I only use this in flour. I've had this a long time. But this is the uh, the bed bud swell um, bat guano. This is something that my friends have used for years. Uh, and so I use it as well. But we're going to do one tablespoon of the back one. I probably should have like a little mask or something dealing handling this guano, but you know, with all the uh, stuff going around. Uh, and then let's see, what kind of fun, what kind of fun stuff can I add in here? What do we want for bloom? Do we want to? Uh... I'm gonna let you guys decide. Do we want to go alfalfa extract, or do we want to go pumpkin extract? So I'll let you guys decide. Either one's fine with me. Um, you know, they don't both serve the same purpose, but let's see. Alfalfa? All right, there's one alfalfa. That was the first. Riot powder's on it. That's what we're gonna do. Boom, boom, boom. Now I've lost my little liquid measuring thing. So I got to use this. Got to kind of do it the hard way. But we're going to add one ounce, 30 milliliters. Oh, I almost did it. Plus a little bit more, just because I don't want to dump it back in. Uh, and you know what? Something's telling me. I don't think I'm gonna do that, but uh, so these are from my grow back in 2006, and these were seeds, or the plant that seeded out was just called haze. That's all it was. It was haze, and it was wicked wispy and it smelled like cat piss, and it was a horrible plant, and it took forever to flower. Um, 2006, I just found these. So something, uh, something might come out of them. All right, so we've got that, 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 that. I think that's about, I. I would usually put some uh, some build a bloom in there, but I don't think I'm going to. What I am going to put in there is get a big bag of yayo here, plant yayo, right? No, I'm just playing. This is uh, 
This is uh, just a gypsum. So. Build this oil gypsum. So we're gonna go with one tablespoon of that as well. Got some water. Just a little, 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 little tiny bit. You don't need a whole lot. See if I can find the top here. And add a little more water. There we go. Oh yeah. That's almost the right consistency. Another little dishy dashy. Because we want it. We want it to be moist, but not soupy. We want it to be still kind of hold together in a pasty sort of form so that it holds to the shell and doesn't just kind of soup out, you know? out from the shell. But this, uh, this is looking pretty decent here. Look at the sides. So, you know, really all this is is Avocado isn't a huge part. You know, it became Avocado Tech because Blue had some avocados that had gone bad. And as we all know, you know, avocados have tons of great stuff in them from carbs to natural sugars to amino acids to fats to all sorts of their, their superfood, right? So, you know, if all that stuff is being broken down inside your living soil bed, it, it's, it's a superfood, right? So it's got to be good for the stuff in your bed. It's got to be, it's got to break down to, to be good for things growing in your bed. Um, but like I was saying before, you can use anything. You can use an old pumpkin, an old squash, cantaloupe, um, any sort of like vegetable that that has a shell sort of harder outside shell and uh, doesn't have like a, a, a super wet wet fruit inside um, I mean you can use that but your stuff's gonna be wet it's just gonna be a different consistency so it's uh, this if, if, if anything avocado tech just took off because it's it was catchy you know, it, it sounds a lot better than fruit drop theory, right? All right. And so this is really easy. Pod. Is not hard to do. You know, it doesn't have to be flat uh, because what we're going to be looking for when we set this down. Oh, is that El Dubo asking? All right, El Dubo. Set the avocado tech down. Who do I have? We'll see if you can figure it out, okay, El Dubo? We'll see if you know who it is. It's 
pretty basic. It's pretty simple. It was only in one movie. Nope, no Hulk today, Smiley. Oh, but I did, so I did go golfing today. It's uh, 40, between 44 and 46 degrees on average. And um, I broke 80, which is awesome. I shot 79, I went 41, 39. So I was pretty psyched with that. Any of you that golf will know and that's pretty good, especially in like 40 degree weather. The wind blowing. Now, there's a lot left over, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that in a little sandwich baggie and I'm gonna freeze that so that I can use it at a later date. So there you go, there's your avocado tech. Um, now, what you do, I know some people have been, uh, <coughs> occasionally will have problems and your worms won't come and find your uh, avocados. It's either there's a dry spot, they don't like the dryness, um, I've had that happen a couple times and I've moved it to where there is an actual blue mat soaker dripping and uh, they, they come right to it. So you're just going to kind of move it around in a couple places here and there and the, the worms will come. Uh, let's see, where do I want to put this? I'm not tasting that. Fuck that, Smiley. No way. All right, so you guys can see, right? There's already worms underneath. You see him? He's already there breaking down um, all of this, you know, uh, mulch stuff that I've set down, um, as well as some of the dry uh, amendments that were left over from the previous uh, top dressing. So actually I've gone through, uh, this is, I think I did one harvest without the avocado tech. And uh, I don't know, I just like doing it. So let me see how I'm gonna do this. Uh, what, am I gonna set you right here? You gonna fit right there? All right, hopefully you can see. Can't see like that, can you? All right. So I got my little spike right here, right? Like so, we're gonna put that kind of right below. Can you still see that? You can see how close that is to the, the stock. It's about four or five inches, maybe four inches. And all we're gonna do is take this, I'm gonna plop it down right there. I'm gonna come over here to my little blue mat dripper. And I'm gonna open it up just so it's dripping like that. It doesn't have to be a huge major drip and I might even turn it back just a little bit here try and catch one there we go 
So it doesn't have to be open a whole shit ton, right? Um, but we do, when once that topsoil starts drying out a little bit, we do want the consistent moisture to be right there underneath the avocado so the worms are drawn to it, so on and so forth. You can even cover it up a little bit so that it's nice and dark at all times, right? I know Blue likes to cover, cover his stuff right up. Um, so there's plant one, right? That gets half. Oh, hey, Jack. Sorry, I couldn't see. Couldn't see anything. Drip, drip. Uh, yeah, so one half of avocado per plant. Right, so it's not, you know, we're not ending the world here we're not you know i'm i'm using avocados that would have been otherwise just thrown away um so it is what it is now i'm gonna take this other drip emitter oh sorry guys my bad i'm a real bad cameraman <laughs> oh what a dink <laughs> Sorry. All right. Is that going to work? I don't know. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. There we go. I like that. All right, I'm going to grab the other avocado, which is right above me. And we're going to take that one, and we're going to go... Right down like that, just give it a little press down. And then we can even cover it so that the moisture kind of doesn't evaporate and stays there a little bit. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. There we go, it's a little dark. So there's, uh, there's the other avocado. And that is... Uh, that's Avocado Tech Flowering Pod. Now, I'm gonna go grab a... Uh... Let's go grab a little Ziploc baggie. And then we have to take the excess of the bloom as much of it as we can get out. This will probably fill um, some other, whether it be a pumpkin, a small pumpkin, uh, cantaloupe, some sort of uh, bean, I don't know. What else you fucking want to put in here? Bananas. I, I try to stay away from really acidic fruits. They seem to draw pinworms, um, which are never fantastic in your plants and get in your roots and kind of fuck your shit up. All right. So, boom, there is a uh, flower pod mixture all made up. I'll label that, I'll put it in the freezer, and that'll get used at some point. But I'm not throwing it away, right? I mean, I paid for those amendments that are in there, and the avocado's not getting wasted. So, it's, I'd like to think of it as a win-win. Right? Did anyone guess my, my superhero shirt yet? No, 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 no one yet. All right, that's okay. That's okay. Anyway, it's a uh, it's quick so, right? So, boom. Watermelonisha. Yeah, I've had that t-shirt for a long time pretty funny. 
I think. Right? Avocado down the middle. This one's pretty small. Now the plants in the that are vegging are quite small too. They're Bruce Banners. They've been having they had a hell of a time vegging because I won't lie, I'm a I'm like I procrastinate like a motherfucker um, with veg plants. To my to my own detriment. I just for some reason just let them go and go and go and go and think to myself, oh, once I hit the beds, they're going to come right out of it. They're going to be fine. They generally do, but that's really no way to, like, raise them from, from youth, right? Like, you wouldn't do that with your own children. Not that, you know, they really equate to each other, but... So, it is what it is. I, I got things to work on, right? Oh, we didn't get the seed out. It's just a little baby seed so what I'm gonna do uh, with this one since this is just well actually this is just like a little baby avocado um, I'm gonna decide I'm gonna put this kind of in between the two smaller plants and hopefully the roots will will grow towards where the pod is, you know, as everything grows. And then I will put uh, the other one right above the, the, the one larger plant. But I don't know if you can quite see, you know, you can see the mold starting. So, right, you don't want to eat that. Don't want to throw it away because, you know, someone may have died to transport it to the U.S. or their family's been run off or it could have come from Hawaii. I don't know. But I got all that in there. Now this is going to be a veg pod, right? We did the flower pod first for, for the ones that are in week three uh, to get them through that, that middle uh, sort of bump that they want of um, is it phosphorus and then oh, some potassium for to, for to carry that that water uptake to help bring that nutrient uptake up. So, uh, two twenty two no. Place your shelf flower. Five, ten, ten. There we go. This is the one we want. So this is the uh, the build a soil. Ten, three, ten. Right, and we are going to do. Some build a bloom. Uh, and we are going to do. Kashi. We are going to do the insect frass. And some recycled silk. But not as much as we did for the flower, right? So gonna get our other sided measuring spoon or teaspoon and I'm gonna do one teaspoon of frass two teaspoons of frass seems seems more appropriate I'm not much of a recipe guy I'm more of a pinch of this, a dash of that, a handful of this, a little bit of that. We're going to do one teaspoon of the build a -boom. Do 
two teaspoons. Of the 10310. Now that bud swell was a high potassium. Uh, bat guana. It wasn't a high nitrogen bat guana. So that's why that's not going in here. We're going to do one teaspoon of the recycle sill. I don't know why I keep saying we, because it's just me here. That's all it is. And some silica in there. to break down some grow caution. I'm do one tablespoon of that. All right, that is the mixture. That there so I don't lose it and get the top on here. Bang, bang. We got our little avocados. We need some water. Oh. We have our comfrey extract, which we will add. Come now. Roughly. You see? Cool. So this one might be a little too wet. The worms might actually not like this one. certainly smells like they would like it, though. Ooh. Tell you what, if you get a chance, go to Miles Filippelli's website. The ferment, uh, fermentedplantextracts.com He's got some awesome stuff up right now. Hey, John, you're welcome, man. Um... He's got some KNF products. He's got, you know, all his ferments and stuff. He's, the guy's A1. He knows what he's doing. He's definitely into the living soil, organic, KNF, Jadam, whole experience. Like, weed should taste good. And he's making products that help that process. So, yeah. Uh, as you, I get him through build soil but he's... You know, he's got his own website, too, so. All right, and then we're just going to fill them up. Now, I don't have a, well, I have some mulch, not a whole lot. I want to add like some chia seed, some, what is it, how do you say it? Is it a kai or a sai? I'm not from South America, so I probably am not even close to pronouncing it right, but make like a super fruit or super food fucking blend for the avocado. I think that would be pretty sweet. All right, hey. 
now we don't have drippers there, but I do have a dripper over there. I don't want to have one in the middle. So I think strategically placed. Reminds me of my kids' diapers. Must have had some secret uh, comfrey feedings or something. Oh, I got it on my finger. I feel like Joe Dirt. I got the poo on me. Uh, so that's avocado tech. Let's see if I can. Hey, the fuck? There we go. So, uh, that is an avocado tech bloom and veg pod. Really the only difference between those is a couple ingredients as well as, um, that's it, just a couple ingredients. Uh, the pre-flower will have like a little bit more uh, nitrogen availability as well as uh, phosphorus availability. So, and then the, um, you know, the flower pod has more phosphorus and potassium. So, that is, uh, that's how I gauge and scale my avocado tech pods. No pods are ever the same. Um, just because I don't think there's a, an, an actual well, I can't say there's not a true science, but I don't have the, the time or the personality to go through and uh, document. And I gotta get my glasses, because these lights are bright. And track, uh, and test and send away for testing like I, I just I don't have I don't I'm not economically set up like that right I, ideally you know if Shiba Inu hits yeah come on Shiba hit uh, I might be able to do that you know set up a facility and do that but um, just being a home grower with a family and stuff I just kind of go by my feel of what the cultivars are what I think anticipate them needing um, what I saw them perhaps lacking a little bit of in the prior flowering process um, and just kind of little small earmarks like that you know like and just 
try and keep track of it as best I can in my head. And I, I usually don't end up keeping track of it. Like, you guys saw how I made the avocado, did the avocado tag. It's just, dee 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 I'm not, and next time it'll be different. You know, if you go, if you look at some of my past videos of avocado tech, you'll see some other stuff being added. So it really just calls on how I feel about the soil, you know, how I see things growing, um, any discolorations or what, just how the plant's reacting to its environment and stuff lends me to have a sense for the rest of it, I guess. But as you can see back here, uh, we have a little bit of new growth on these sickly, sickly vegetated plants. Um, they're coming back in a couple weeks. They'll be nice and lush and green. And uh, yeah, I've got several different things coming to combat any mealybugs that are still present. I have seen a couple actually on the, you know, there's not much... Um, there's not much cover crop for them to find new leaves and stuff to uh, to eat on. So I actually seen a couple like on the outside of the bed crawling around. Um, so they're mobile, which which kind of freaks me out about my other tent, right? Which I don't think I've shown you guys yet. But we're in week three over here with the cherry pie and the nine pound hammer. Uh, I went through and really thinned stuff out. Uh, I cut away any of like the branches that only came up halfway to the main, to the to the taller stalks. So just to allow more room. Uh, at the larger grow, I did notice that the cherry pie needs a lot of that mid mid branching air movement. Uh, the leaves. The leaves are huge, they just trap moisture, they cause some mini climates. So I did actually catch a little bit of uh, mold on like some of the fan leaves that had died. Um, so being more conscious of that, I went through and I, I, I thinned stuff out uh, quite a bit. Now, oh, something else I did do, uh, with these plants, which has actually been working for the last day, um, I've taken a bunch of that insect frass, the 222, and I actually, out, you can't quite see it, but you can see the discoloration, the little, like, looks like sand here. Uh, what I did was I took a couple tablespoons of that frass and I just built like a little sand pyramid up around the base of the stalk. Uh, for those for these three little tiny plants and so far I'll do this um, and I and this and, and I don't know what else the horn growing out of my head but uh, I got, hopefully that can that's a method to keep uh, these mealybugs from traveling onto my plants uh, I don't think it's a long-lasting method because when I apply anything, you know, watering from the top as I do with ferments and stuff like that, uh, you know, that'll get washed away and I may have to do it again. But I have some stuff coming. While I'm in early, early veg, I have some wettable sulfur coming. So I'm going to fucking fuck this bed up with wettable sulfur. Um, I have some of the... Uh, Kea extract coming. I have some soap nuts on back order from Build a Soil. Those are gonna shipped out when they get them. Uh, and there was something else that I ordered. Oh, I ordered the uh, Christio blah blah blah. Uh, the Mealy Bug Destroyers. So I ordered 200 of those. I'll drop them. In this bed, uh, they seem to like they seem to like the temperatures that my tents stay at in between like 64 and 80 degrees. With they don't the humidity doesn't really matter to them. So running at a higher VDP of like 70 percent isn't going to affect them that much. 
or at all, which is great. So hopefully they'll get in there, they'll do their job, um, or at least part of their job, and can maybe hopefully lay some eggs and do all that fun stuff, and then I'll have like a little cycle going. Uh, ideally, I need something in there that's gonna wipe these things out. Uh, par me taking out soil and treating the bed with something I really don't want to treat the bed with, which I don't know what that would be, but um, you know, I'm kind of going through the process of figuring out what what works the best. So, and you know, in that process, you can't you can't throw everything at it at once, right? Um, you have to give it a couple weeks to see if it's actually working, because uh, it's unless you're doing basically something poisonous that's gonna kill them in one fucking contact spray, like, you know, it takes a little while to knock down their populations and let other things uh, do, their, do their job as far as beneficial insects and stuff. So, that's what we'll do. We'll see what happens. I got my aloe plant in there. I don't know if you can see that back there. It's got a bunch of new shoots on it, which is exciting. I thought it was going to die there when I transplanted it, but it's, uh, it's turning out turning out pretty fair. Um, yeah, so we are in uh, week three. I think I flowered these right around the like, 16th or 17th of, sep of uh, November now, so... Yeah, about, about halfway through October. So we're, we're about three weeks. I would three, yeah, I'd say three weeks. I haven't seen any signs of mealybugs in this 4x4, four four, which is great. I'm pretty psyched about that. Um, yeah. So I guess uh, that's gonna wind up the avocado talk. I don't, I don't have anything I'm particularly uh, angry about, so I can't. I mean, I do, but nothing that I really want to go on any rants on right now. Um, so I'm gonna wind it up. I want to thank everyone for hanging out for a few minutes. Uh, yeah, share this. Share the. Uh, Share the Avocado Tech video if you want to. Get me some subscribers. Maybe I can start making some passive income off this. Biatch! Who knows? All right, be nice until it's time to not be nice. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, peace out.